Hello, Rotarians. Welcome to spring. It'll be back. Today's speaker to us is my colleague, Dr. John Griffin. He's a member of the political science faculty here at the University of Colorado Boulder. He specializes in the study of political equality with American political institutions, especially the U.S. Congress. He holds a bachelor's degree from Boston College, Woo! a law degree from CU Boulder, yeah, and he did actually work as an attorney at one time, and he holds a PhD from Duke University. Since 2014, he has served as director of the CU Conference on World Affairs. So let's give John a warm, bolder welcome, who will also introduce Betsy Hand as they speak to us on the Conference on World Affairs, 70 Amazing Years. John? Thanks, Jim, uh, for that kind introduction. And uh, thanks for all you eagles and blue devils and buffs out there. Um, this is, uh, as many of you probably know, uh, Jim was the master of ceremonies for CU's graduation for a few years, maybe many years. So this is a special moment for me because it may be the closest that I ever get to being a commencement speaker. Uh, having been introduced by Jim. So um, you're going to hear more from me in a moment. Uh, first, what I'd like to do, if, if, do we have the video queued up to show? I just want to give you a, f a flavor for what is going to happen um, in Boulder next week. So the Conference on World Affairs that opens at the University of Colorado this morning. The conference begins today, runs all week, as it does in early April every year, Conference on World Affairs, which begins today on the CU Boulder campus. So, so I'll be back, I'll back in a moment. moment. Uh, I, 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 I want to introduce uh, our, our community, community and program, program chair. chair. Is it echoing? No. no. I want to introduce, introduce our community and program, program chair, uh, Betsy, uh, Betsy Hand. Hand. It's not like we just need to kill the video somehow. All right, we're back. OK, so uh, I am the faculty director for the Conference on World Affairs. And I'll be back in a moment to share a few um, points of information with you about how we've become more connected to this community, to the campus. But I, I want to um, really put center stage uh, Betsy Hand, who is our community chair and program chair. So she heads up a team, an army of 125 
a community and student uh, volunteers from the campus and the larger community who recruited all these 115 speakers and designed the 200 sessions, which I hope you'll all enjoy next week. So it really is her achievement uh, to pull together the content of this conference, and we're, of course, you know, eternally indebted to her for that. Um, so without further ado, Betsy Hand. Thank you so much. Is that, yeah, working? So I'm so excited to see um, a new member of the I Have a Dream gal here. And um, I just want to say that we have 40 I Have a Dream students coming to CWA this year for the first time as, uh, as part of the audience. So they're going to have a treat on, on Friday. And then I also want to acknowledge Cinda, who is a sponsor of part of our program this year. Cinda's Our Secure Future is uh, sponsoring the Leadership in the Words of Women um, series that we're holding this year. And I thank you so much, Cinda. Yay. All right. So in, in the program, you'll see that we've been We've been doing this for 70 years, and we're really, really proud of that. Um, and there's so much in the past that, that is dear to our hearts. And part of that past is, of course, Roger Ebert. And we'll be continuing his tradition this year and doing the, what we call the Ebert Interruptus. And we'll also be bringing in uh, Molly, Molly Ivins will be coming back. <laughs> Um, some of her friends, produ um, uh, film producers, are putting together a documentary on Molly called Raising Hell, of course. And um, they've got a lot, a lot of footage, but they'll be, and they'll be showing us um, about 20 minutes of the footage from this new documentary that they're putting together. And um, it's funny as hell, of course. <laughs> so moving on to this year, one of our special speakers is the first Youth Poet Laureate um, of the United States ever. And Amanda Gorman will be here and she'll read a poem especially uh, created for the Conference on World Affairs. We're really excited about her coming. Okay, so as I look around, all you guys and women, oh, I forgot to mention, I'm a Rotarian daughter. My, my dad was a, a long time um, Rotarian and he would bring me to the meetings every once in a while. And every, and it, but then they introduced everybody as Brother Jack and Brother Joe. And, and I asked somebody here today whether they still do that. And they said, well, no. <laughs> we don't, because there's the sister of Jane and sister, sister Cinda. So congratulations for including women <laughs> in, in this wonderful organization. All right. I want to talk to you about. So I mentioned one of the themes for this year. Last year we started a new tradition of having a couple, a single theme that we created from scratch outside of the normal planning that we do. And that was on food. And we're bringing food back again. Last year we had Rick Bayless. This year we're going to have Kim Severson, who's the food writer for the New York Times. And we'll have all kinds of food related things, you know, weather. We're going to be able to feed all the billions of people that will be here in 2050, and we'll learn about ancient grains. Um, it's a it's a really exciting and fun um, series for a foodie boulder. I mean, it's always very po it's been very popular. So the other one, as I mentioned, is leadership in the words of women. We're bringing in um, the CEO of the Ms. Foundation the founder of an organization called Vote, Run, Lead, um, which is a, a spinoff of the White House Project, which has been alive for a long time and was trying to bring more and more women into politics and eventually into the White House. So it'll be interesting hearing from Teresa Younger on that. Um, let's see. I'm, you're talking about that. <laughs> OK. So there are a couple of things that I want to highlight about this year's conference. And first is that this year, for the first time, we have almost 50-50 men and women uh, as our speakers. 
<laughs> I'm very, very proud of that. We worked really, really hard to do to bring the women's representation up to the their proper level. And to do that, we had to, you know, say to some longtime uh, CWA speakers that uh, they were going to have to take a uh, a break this year. But we, we're really, really excited about the women that are coming, and we're really proud of the fact that uh, we've been able to do that. We also have 22 countries represented this year, um, and, uh, and we have a lot more diversity. It's no longer old white men <laughs> as, as, it, as it used to, used to be. So we're going to start off, and a lot of you are in the tech business I've been hearing from talking with many of you. And we're going to start off with the keynote speaker, who is Tony Seba, who is a futurist. He's uh, come up with a think tank called Rethink X. And he'll, I think he'll be very stimulating. Um, I heard him speak uh, a while back, and he talks about the fact that in very soon, not in 20 years, but soon, like in five years, we might not need our own cars. So and we might not need garages. So when you're planning your next dwelling or your next um, spot, you might just eliminate the garage and uh, get, get with it. <laughs> okay, there'll be a lot of politics. Um, we'll be debating tr Trump's foreign policy and I've been listening to the, or watching the emails going back and forth in the preparation for that debate and they're each claiming that there is one and uh, that they're, they will be debating the elements of Trump's foreign policy. Okay, let me feature a few more things. One of the exciting things that's happening this year is on Tuesday, we have a panel called Nukes Forever, uh, the administration's new nuclear war plan. And Joe Cerincioni, who is an old favorite of the CWA, will be speaking on that. We'll also have another panel with Joe and also Susie Snyder, who, um, with her colleagues in Europe, uh, she's on the steering committee for something called ICANN, which won the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> I always get it wrong. Thank you, John. The Nobel Peace Prize for um, uh, for 2017, um, and we'll also be Skyping in the signature woman of founder of ICANN, Beatrice Finn. So help us, you know, pray for that to work. We're working on that, I think, this very moment. Yeah. Um, one of the um, speakers that we're excited to welcome back is David Grinspoon. He's going to be on a panel um, that's called Earth and Human Hands. And the fun thing about that is that that's the name of his book, his most recent book. I think he's coming out with another one in May. But it's a really challenging book. It talks about space exploration and why that's important for us figuring out how to live on Earth. Um, and he's optimistic. He, he says that, you know, there are these amazing waves of extinctions, and, um, but that hopefully now that humankind is on the earth and is changing things, sometimes not so much for the good, um, his point is that we, because we have this capability of, of making changes, that we can make it for the better. And he's certain that we will. All right. The jazz concert. Um, if you haven't already made a donation of $150 to the CWA and therefore weren't already receiving tickets, don't despair. They're, you'll be able to get in if you just come at the time of the jazz concert on Tuesday night at 7.30. There are usually plenty of seats left over, so just come and wait for 10 minutes or so and then enjoy. Well, <laughs> you can make a donation and then you get in next year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me see. Oh, a couple of things that we've been trying lately, um, the last year and this year, and the year before, is um, using the Fisk Planetarium. How many have 
bend to the fisk. Oh, wow, that's so great. You know, and I, that's so amazing. I'm so happy. Uh, so we're bringing, we're gonna have four things at the Fisk, and one of them is particularly of interest to me anyway, is that a Canadian uh, musician, piano player, um, who normally does um, piano background for silent films, he's coming and he's, well, he went up to the Northern Canada on the tundra and under the lights of the Aurora Borealis um, played um, extemporaneously and then he recorded, he recorded that and brought it back, and he'll be here playing in addition to the video of, his, of the Aurora Borealis experience. And it's, it's very lovely. It's a nice break from all the stimulating um, intellectual uh, conversations that you'll be having throughout the week. All right, just wanna highlight a few more things before I let John talk. Oh. Um, so part of the Women's in Leadership uh, Committee group really wanted to emphasize activism and really wanted to respond to the issues of, that women are facing today. And so there will be a panel on the hashtag MeToo movement, and that will be very interactive. Um, Ginny Corsi, I don't know if any of you know who she is, but she's a, a great facilitator. She'll be working with the, the um, speakers that are speaking on that issue and also um, bringing audience into the, into the conversation. All right. Oh, something that might interest you here in Colorado is, um, do you remember, I think it was last summer, the um, cake shop uh, case where, um, a gay couple wasn't able to um, buy a wedding cake for their wedding. Well, that case is now being considered by the Supreme Court, and we have a couple of lawyers from Denver who um, were part of that case, and they'll be talking about that. And for that program, we're going to be doing it at the Wolf Law, and in addition to many others that we'll have there. So for those of you who heard about the Allie Reisman um, presentation, um, those tickets are all sold or given away free in a lottery. So you, maybe you'll be able to hear that in a um, uh, live feed. But instead of doing that, we are really hoping you might go see a film called Wasted, the story of food waste, which is part of the food track, of course. And that will be... Um, played at uh, the Boulder Public Library. And then there's another um, film that we're showing that very night called uh, Merchants of Doubt. And the reason we're doing that, especially this year, is that Naomi Oreskes will be here with us and she wrote the book that this film was based on. And she'll be talking back that film after it's over. It starts at seven and it's in the Visual Arts Center on campus. Am I almost done? <laughs> I don't want to use up my, uh, all our time here. Um, oh, Daniel Feinberg is going to be here. She's a Boulder native. She went to Boulder High, and she is now one of the shining stars of Pixar. And she is going to be talking about Coco, the new fabulous film that uh, we saw this summer, I think, or this fall. She was the lighting director for Coco. And if you remember, that is an amazing film with lights just ablaze everywhere. So she'll be talking about how she did that. And she'll also be talking with some of our kids. Um, she'll be going into two middle schools and talking, about, talking with girls about coding. She is a big advocate for getting girls into, the, into coding um, as they seem to be slipping away in that um, in, the, in their education in that field. And then you're gonna talk about the Hill. Okay, th those are just a few highlights. Take programs with you, circle them, get the app, um, and enjoy. It starts on Monday. Have a great week. I hope you'll all be there. I'll see you there. Thank you.
Thank you, Betsy. So you, you really get a sense of how much of a festival of ideas this event is, and there really is something for everyone. Um, and again, congratulations, uh, Betsy and her uh, program committee on a, on a tremendous program this year. Um, I really just want to say two things briefly, and then, and then actually Betsy and I will be happy to answer any questions that you all have. Um, I guess the first thing I just wanted to mention is, you know, I really see a shared mission between what I perceive to be uh, the Rotary's uh, mission of service um, and really the, the way in which this conference comes about. You know, some of you may know this, but others it may be new uh, information. So we have Betsy's program committee, 125 people working all year round, thousands of hours uh, to, to build this program that they don't get to really enjoy any more than you do, even though you know you can just walk in the door for free next week. Um, we have 100 homes that are hosting speakers for the week. We have 200 members of the community that are acting as moderators for the conference. Um, my staff that are, yes, being paid to work on the conference work you know, far more than they're paid for, I guarantee you, to make sure that this event happens. So there's just really you know, hundreds of, of acts of service um, that are creating this content for, for the community, again, um, free and open to the public. Um, so it, so we, we share the, the Rotary's um, uh, mission to be of service to the broader community. And then my second point really is, is just connected to that, which is about connection, that, that the CWA has really deepened its connections with the broader Boulder community, and then actually even into the campus uh, in the last uh, four or five years. Um, just as a couple examples of that, um, this year for the first time we will hold, well, sorry, not for the first time, but uh, we will hold sessions at Boulder Public Library. There were actually, I, I found in some old programs, we did this in the 90s. Um, but so there will be sessions in late afternoon at 4.30 p.m. at, at the Central Pub, uh, Public Library location, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, there will also be an evening film shown there on Thursday evening. Uh, we have a Monday evening session at the Dairy Arts Center as well. Um, I believe that that has filled up in terms of RSVPs, but there's a, a walk-up line, if, and I imagine you'll get in if you show up at 7 p.m. on Monday night. Uh, we also have a, a session at the Museum of Boulder that's in the program. So really what we're trying to do is to make sure that the conference is more accessible and more connected to the community and those folks that maybe are working during the work day or during the work week so that there are events in the evening or off campus that might be more accessible to them at the end of the work day. Um, actually, this is a, a bit of an early notice, although if you look at the back of the program, you'll see this. Next year, the conference will run Tuesday to Saturday. Tuesday to Saturday. Again, trying to reach out to those folks that maybe um, aren't able to attend during a week, work week on um, making it available to them on the weekend. Um, again, just in terms of connectedness, uh, we are throwing a party for you. So on the very last day of the conference, uh, Friday, a week from today, Friday the 13th, let's hope it's still lucky, uh, we are throwing a party on the hill. So just off of the CU campus, um, there will be live music, free food, and maybe not so free beverages. Um, uh, for you to enjoy, and it should be a really fun way to cap off uh, the, celebrating our 70th year uh, as, as a conference. A um, couple of other points of connection. You know, if you if you glance at the program, you'll see that we've really expanded our um, both individual donors and our sponsors from the community. You know, obviously that brings in resources to the conference, but really more importantly, it brings us a sense of connection to the broader community in the sense that we have a sort of a shared future together. Um, we also, I'll just highlight, um, have a partnership with um, the HOP this coming week. So if you uh, are a HOP rider, you will not have to pay next week if you are in the, um, accustomed to that. Uh, we've, per we've essentially bought out the HOP service to allow free transportation on that. Um, we've also partnered with B-Cycle to um, provide free bicycles next week. So even if you're not coming to the conference, all the B-Cycle uh, uh, bicycles around town will be free next week, courtesy um, of that partnership. 
So, you know, I could go on and on, but really, uh, we're just so uh, thrilled to present the 70th Conference on World Affairs to you, Betsy and I, and we hope that you'll take some time to partake of it. Um, enjoy. Yes. Marty, do we have time for a few questions? I know you run a pretty tight ship. You have about three minutes for questions. Okay. Yes, sir, in the back. that went into having it. <clears throat> yeah, so I have some knowledge of this, but don't hold me accountable to the historians and my uh, colleague. So uh, the conference was founded around the time of the establishment of the United Nations in New York. And so if you look in the program, actually, you'll see that the original name of the conference was United Nations Week. And that's where the flags come from. You might know that, so we have this tradition before the keynote address of the, all the invited speakers and the chancellor and march through a sort of wall or tunnel of flags into Mackey Auditorium. So I think the original concept was actually to build public support uh, for a United Nations and, and to have the United Nations in, in New York City. Um, and I think maybe as part of that uh, uh, recruitment or you know, effort to sway public opinion, there were actually conference on world affairs in other places. So there's actually still one in Nebraska, in Kearney, Nebraska. It's a little smaller. I think it's run entirely by about 12 students. <laughs> but ours obviously has grown into something much, much larger. Um, and what I was leading up to was that Eleanor Roosevelt was one of our yes. uh, conference attendees and presenters uh, in 1955 and maybe 57 or something like that. So again, in connection, I think, with trying to build that public support. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes, so um, if you are unable to come to campus during the week next week, um, we have three of our venues that are live streamed, so you can actually watch it in real time. You just go to the CWA website, www.colorado.edu backslash CWA. You'll see the three venues with the panels identified. So you can watch a session live. You can actually ask a question of the panelists from your home or your office or wherever you're vacationing next week um, through our app. If you download the app for free on your phone, you can ask a question of the panel and you can hear your question, see your question asked of the panelists from wherever you are. So, uh, so that's three venues. Um, the largest venues are probably the most popular sessions. Um, and then all of that content is then archived on YouTube. So if you if you go next week and you're trying to choose between sessions, my, our advice is choose the session that you won't be able to watch later on video. You know, so if if if, this, if you're choosing between a session in Mackey Auditorium and Chem 140, go to Chem 140 and then watch the one in Mackey later because that one will be videoed. All of our sessions are audio recorded, and in fact, that's true going all the way back to 1948. So. It's very appropriate that you know, we have Jim here. So the Norland Library, which Jim oversaw as dean, has an archive of all CWA audio recordings. Some of them, many of them, still need to be digitized. So if you're interested in contributing to that effort, we'd love to <laughs> talk with you. Um, but a lot of that content has been digitized and is available to you. You can go right now online and listen to you know, Henry Kissinger talk about nuclear deterrence. Or Eleanor uh, Roosevelt. Or, or, or Eleanor Roosevelt, yes. Um, it is my privilege to thank you very, very much. I've been going to the conferences almost from the beginning. And Molly Ivins and I got acquainted, and that was really fun. And the Higmans. And I'm sure you can tell lots of stories, and lots of people in here could tell stories. So it is, um, again, thank you so much for coming. I bet everyone here is very eager to get there next week. So in your honor, the Boulder Rotary Club is pleased to contribute 100 doses of vaccine in your name. 
for each of you. Thank you very, very much to Betsy. Thank you. Thanks.